David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What is it that we, we do? We give the people what they want. Fred Van Vliet put up 54 points. We have Jared Allen joining us later in the show, but we start with what could be an NBA Finals preview. I don't know. It is the Clippers visiting the Nets in Brooklyn, and we start with Kyrie Irving. Shame Big on buckets you. down when the stretch. Finished up with 39 points. Jalen, is this the Nets that we all wanted to see? Brooklyn, so yes. And when I get confused, I respect everything that's happening in the East, and I can't wait to see the playoffs. Joel Embiid has been outstanding. You know how much I love Tatum and Brown. But Kevin Durant is winning the East. And let's put some respect on Kyrie's name offensively. So many times when you're a public figure, people take your personality and equate that to your performance. When you're watching him solely play basketball, it's as good as it get offensively, dog. He got all of the requisite skills. One-on-one, -on -one, from the three, catch and shoot, in the post, turns over both shoulders. Like, he a dynamic offensive player. And then to see James Harden playmaking ability is effortless. James Harden seems like he walking more now than he did when he was with the Rockets. He like, all right. He can do this for 50 more years. It reminds me when Kareem was older playing with the Lakers and they were showtime and he didn't have to cross half court sometime. But when he did, they gave him the ball. That's what Harden doing, flirting with triple doubles on a nightly basis. I did notice on a couple possessions, Kyrie would just get, get he, he looks like he's screwing in a light bulb sometimes. He's just twisting it this way and twisting it that way and going off the right foot and the left foot. And on a couple of those possessions, James Harden literally didn't get over half court. He just passed <laughs> it to Kyrie and they watched him do his thing. And James Harden had some something interesting to say contrasting his time with the Nets versus his time when he was with the Rockets. Let's listen to the beard. Scoring isn't everything, you know, so I try to impact the game in other ways. I try to do... You know, obviously, Kevin and Kai get them, you know, easier looks when they can. Uh, it's not about points for me. It's not about stats for me. It's about getting a win. And, and you know, I think since I've been here, I've tried to do whatever it takes in order for us to have a win. And, and that's all that matters. How do you think he really feels about his time and his game with the Nets versus when he was with the Rockets? Well, this game will humble you, Jacoby. And though he has so many amazing individual accolades with the Rockets and MVPs and scoring titles, he hasn't won a championship, and he's playing with two guys that have. And since he has not only played with KD prior, but they have a friendship and a kinship, he's now willing to sacrifice and do whatever it takes to get Joe Harris shots, to make sure Kyrie feels good about his offensive game. Feed Jeff Green when he's slashing to the bucket. I appreciate the maturation of his game. One of the things they're gonna have to do, however, is be able to get timely stops. That's the one thing when I'm watching the Nets play, they allow teams one dribble drive, you can get a layup against them. They're not really rotating and helping too much. So that's the one thing that they're gonna have to improve, in particular in tight game situations. And we saw a little bit of that last night. There's one possession, Kawhi was trying to back down Harden and Harden was giving him trouble and Kyrie was staying in front of Lou Will. Like they got a couple stops with some defensive efforts in the fourth quarter. We'll see if they can continue that because obviously defense is what they need to work on. But you were watching this game, Jalen. You were using your astute experience and wisdom and, and analysis and you found a fatal flaw on the Clippers. What is that? And you know how much I love Kawhi the Claw since San Diego State. Been big up in him and great to see everything he's accomplished and Paul George as well. But when I look really deeper into the Clippers, and you know my favorite team of all time in sports is the Pistons. I see two former members of their team in their backcourt. Reggie Jackson and Lou Kennard. And Lou Will ain't giving them the six man of the year type numbers and bounce anymore. Patrick Beverly, who was out with an injury, is probably the second or third lowest scoring starting point guard in the entire NBA. So when you look at the landscape of the Western Conference and all of these teams and have these dynamic players in their backcourt like Murray and Donovan Mitchell and Dame Lillard and Luka Doncic, Steph Curry, it goes on and on and on in the West. This may be the actual Achilles heel for the Clippers once the playoffs come. 
Well, one team that had no trouble getting production from their backcourt last night is the Toronto Raptors. They went up against the Magic and undrafted Fred Van Vliet went off for 54 points, 11 for 14 from three, Jalen. What do you think about this young man's performance last night? That's one of my guys. I like to see people who get it from the mud undrafted and then all of a sudden get the largest contract guaranteed of any player that wasn't drafted. Just think about that. Kyle Lowry and he, by the way, Lowry had a triple-double. When we talk mm -hmm. about the top backcourts in the league, people just overlook them. They only Never won the championship a couple of years ago. That's all. That's all. They just won the championship a couple of years ago. Great to see my guy putting in work. And he keep a fresh cut. He keep a fresh cut. <laughs> I love that you love him because he got it from the mud and he was undrafted and he's your guy. And then the real reason he's your guy, because he got a nice hairline. Let's be honest. That's what, that's the first thing that you notice about his game. I'm glad you mentioned the championship because we'll always remember Kawhi bringing this championship to Toronto. But game six and game seven, it was Fred Van Vliet. Hitting huge shots for that team to finally take out the Warriors. Now, Jalen, it's a very interesting game that involved those Warriors last night. The Warriors jumped out to an early lead against the Celtics, but could not hold on too much Tatum and Brown. What do you think about this dynamic duo from Beantown? Well, they're the East Coast version of Kawhi and PG. And just to watch both of these guys ascend, they should both be all NBA performers this year, Jacoby. And I'm really happy for Jalen Brown in particular because we knew he was going to compete defensively and guard multiple positions, but how he's improved his offense and his three-point shooting and his ability to get shots off the dribble and in the clutch has been great for a young player. They're going to be so very special for a long time. Yes, Jalen Brown Ascension has just been consistent, consistent, up, 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 up. Now, I was watching this game. I'm thinking, you got Kemba, Tatum, Brown, but where else are they going to get it? Is it going to come from Thompson? Is it going to come from Tice? Is it going to come from Teague? Is it going to come from Grant Williams, Robert Williams? Like That's one of the things when I look at the teams in the East. I'm, I'm looking at a huge drop-off after those three players on this roster. You think that could hurt them come a series in the playoffs? Well, that's yes is the answer to that question. And that's what's going to make the Easter Conference playoffs so great because each team has its flaws. You have the Bucks and Giannis, but is he going to make shots? from the free throw line and the three point line late. Are the Celtics gonna get some productivity from the five spot? How are the Sixers gonna navigate late game situations with Ben Simmons not necessarily making shots outside of the paint? So there's gonna be questions all over. And so that that's gonna create that intrigue. And for the Nets, are their lack of, of defensive tenacity going to get in the way of their terrific offensive prowess. So it's going to be interesting to see. But Mark is smart to me. He's always been the guy that changes the dynamic for the Celtics. They're going to need him to be a key player, Jacoby, making yep. shots, locking down defensively. And he's actually their best, actually their best passer. Yes, he wasn't in the game last night, but we have some news that matters. Jalen, as the Super Bowl is approaching, there's some, there was a study that was done. And if you think about this, it sounds like a small number, but it's actually a huge number of people. Out of every 100 people watching the Super Bowl, 6% will be watching naked. Jalen, <laughs> 6 out of every 100 people you have in your phone will be watching the Super Bowl naked. Do you know what this information told me? I'm What's watching that? naked this year. I'm watching no naked doubt. this year. No, I'm no. watching naked this year. Why wear clothes? If we can't see anybody, we can't have a party. I am watching the Super Bowl naked this year. During COVID and the pandemic and everybody working from home, absolutely. No question about it. Naked this year, eating popcorn. Mm -hmm. Just don't make just, just make sure that you don't you, you don't call the wrong person. <laughs> Why are you naked don't watching FaceTime. the game when don't you're excited? Me. Don't Patrick FaceTime Mahomes me during the Super Bowl. Throw a deep I ain't wearing any clothes <laughs> for the Super Bowl. I'm part of the 6% and I am proud. Coming up next on the show, we will be joined by Jared Allen, who will give us some really interesting insight 
as what's going to happen this Sunday in the Super Bowl. Make sure you stay tuned for that. You are watching Jalen. Hey, Jalen, don't be sacking my Detroit Lions. What you doing? <laughs>